Hello, I'm Fred Schneider, and you're tuned in to The Weekly Report, a look at news and insight related to programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The General Services Department recently completed a new LED lighting project in the Block 126 parking garage at 13th and Grand. The project replaced old metal halide fixtures with new LED fixtures, which use about one-third of the electricity over the old fixtures while delivering an overall increase in brightness. The LED system will save residents more than $24,000 annually in utility costs. Once again, it's tax season, and business owners must submit all business license renewals and payments to the city by February 28th to receive their 2013 business license. In addition, the employer's annual reconciliation of earnings tax withheld and all W-2 forms are also due February 28th. W-2 information can be submitted electronically at kcmo.org W-2. Please note that all Kansas City, Missouri tax forms can be obtained on the city's website at kcmo.org slash tax, and tax questions may be directed to the Revenue Division at 816-513-1120. Now, let's check in with some of our city's departments for information and insight. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with the Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department, here to tell you about some of the many activities taking place at your city parks and facilities this upcoming month. Celebrate your commitment by locking your love to the old Red Bridge in Minor Park. The placing of love locks is a popular European tradition whereby a couple affix a padlock bearing their names to a bridge, fence, gate, or similar structure to proclaim their unbreakable and everlasting love. Visit the old Red Bridge on Red Bridge Road just east of Holmes in South Kansas City anytime to declare your love. The bridge is near the Minor Park Golf Course and spans the Little Blue River. You can also visit lock-its.com to purchase a custom engraved lock with a portion of proceeds supporting KC Parks. 20 shelter houses located at area parks are available by paid reservation. Shelter house reservations open annually on March the 1st. All reservations are for the entire day, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., and can be made online with a credit card at kcmo.org parks. For more information or questions, please call Shelter Reservations at 816-513-8931. Now, Loose Park Shelter House and Rose Garden Reservations can be made at the Loose Park Garden Center only. To make reservations for Loose Park, visit the Garden Center at 51st Street and Warnell Road or call 816-784-5300. Come out to Bartle Hall on March 22nd through 24th for the 2013 Greater Kansas City Home Show and Flower Lawn and Garden Show. Residents interested in sprucing up their home or yard this spring are guaranteed to find many clever decorating, design, and remodeling ideas at this Kansas City tradition. The Flower Lawn and Garden Show is sponsored by Parks and Rec and will also include an entertainment stage, children's arts activities, information about the city's KC Green Initiative, and much, much more. Visit kchba.org or call 816-942-8800 for more information. To see what other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcmo.org parks and click on the event calendar or give us a call at 816-513-7500. The lead was banned in residential paint in 1978. It continues to be a problem in Kansas City. Most houses and apartments built before 1980 used at least some lead paint at some time or another. People used lead paint because it lasted a long time, it made the brightest colors, and it prevented mold. Unfortunately, lead is also toxic, especially for young children. Lead causes a variety of problems, including brain damage, learning disabilities, and deafness. All children under 6 should get a blood lead test every year. 
either at their pediatrician or at the health department. If a child is found to have an elevated level of lead in the blood, the health department takes action. We provide free nurse case management and a home inspection. The nurses talk with the family about ways they can bring down the child's lead level, like eating healthy, washing hands regularly, and washing toys. The inspector tests the home to find where the child may have gotten the lead. Intact lead paint that is covered by another type of paint is not an immediate problem. However, as lead paint begins to break down, it will often start to look like an alligator skin or a checkerboard pattern and will break off in chips. But even before it visibly breaks down, layers of lead dust develop on the surface and fall away. The most common places to find lead paint are windows, doors, and porches, but lead dust can be blown or tracked anywhere in the home. One simple step you can do if you live in a home with older windows is take a wet paper towel and wipe out your windows and throw the towel and everything it picks up away in the trash. That will really cut down on the amount of lead dust that may blow into your home. If you have any questions, call the Health Department's Childhood Lead Poisoning Prevention Program at 816-513-6048 or visit our website www.kcmo.org health. Anyone living in Kansas City knows the weather can change in an instant. At this time of year, roads can go from clear to icy in just hours. With inclement weather just around the corner, the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department wants to remind you of these driving tips. Even if you keep your vehicle garaged, make sure you have an ice scraper in the car. Check your windshield washer fluid levels. Be sure all your windows and mirrors are clean before pulling out onto the street. Increase your following distance, allow greater distances for braking, and take corners slower. SUVs and four-wheel drive vehicles get around better in snow and ice, but the distance it takes to stop is the same as any other vehicle. However, what braking system you have does make a difference. KCPD's defensive driving instructor Dwight Parker explains why. Well, regardless of uh, what kind of weather we're experiencing, it's important to know what kind of braking system your car has. Most newer cars are equipped with the ABS system, uh, which uh, is operated by a computer and it stops the wheels from locking up should you apply the brakes. Uh, if, if this happens, what you need to do is stay on the brakes until you can, can, can come to a complete stop safely. Uh, you're going to hear a grinding sound. The brake pedal might even pulsate on your foot. This is normal stuff and you're not hurting your car by doing so. Just stay in the ABS system until you can come to a complete stop. The other form is non-ABS and what that means is that you're going to have to use threshold braking. This is a firm constant pressure on the brakes right up to the point where you feel that the tires are going to lock up and start sliding on the pavement. Should that happen you have to come off of them just a little bit because you still have to have that rotation in the tires in order to be able to steer and, and, and have control of the car. You want to make sure you keep that pressure up until you can come to a nice controlled stop. Drivers should not use cruise control when there may be ice on the road. Once again, Officer Dwight Parker. Whether it's icy or rainy or what have you, you got to remember if you're uh, using your cruise control, the speed of the car is at the mercy of the computer. Uh, if your vehicle should start hydroplaning or if you go into a skid, the computer could tell your vehicle, okay, we're slowing down, we need to speed up, or slow down when you don't really want to. So you got to make sure that if it's any inclement weather whatsoever, you do not use your cruise control because you want to be in control of the speed of the car, not the computer. If the city manager declares a traffic emergency, be mindful your vehicle must be equipped with effective tire chains or snow tires. Getting stuck not only backs up traffic, it makes hazardous conditions even more dangerous. Also, normal parking is prohibited on emergency snow routes to allow snow plows to get through. City crews make emergency snow routes a priority, and if you are parked on a snow route, your car will be towed. Kansas City looks pretty in the snow. Let's all do our part to make sure it's also safe this winter season. Hi, I'm Colleen Doctorian with the Water Services Department. We all take pride in the appearance of our yards and homes, but the improper disposal of yard waste or household chemicals can have a big impact on catch basins and our local waterways. 
Storm drains are the curb inlets found at streets, often at corners and on the sides of curbs and gutters. They help prevent flooding by draining rainwater and melted snow off streets. Most storm drains divert water from the street to our local creeks and streams. Water that enters storm drains is not cleaned at a wastewater treatment plant before it flows directly into local waterways. While storm drains were designed to divert water from streets, they can become dangerous polluters when harmful substances from lawns and streets are disposed of in them. Each year, water services crews clean half of the more than 35,000 catch basins located throughout the city. But we need your help. Leaves, yard debris, or household chemicals that are disposed of into the street or storm drains can clog the catch basins, causing backups of street flooding, contaminate local waterways, or damage the storm drain system. Never dispose of yard waste or household chemicals like oil or lawn chemicals into a catch basin. To dispose of leaves, residents can bag them for pickup for scheduled city pickups. Residents can also dispose of them at city drop-off facilities. Check our website for pickup dates and drop-off site locations. Mulching is an easy and beneficial way to deal with leaves and yard waste. Just mow and leave on your lawn. The broken down leaves can help fertilize your yard. Composting is another alternative. If you build a compost pile now, you can have homegrown fertilizer ready for spring planting. You can also place them directly on your garden. To dispose of household hazardous waste, call the Household Hazardous Waste Facility at 513-8400 to make an appointment. For more information, visit our website at www.kcmo.org. Looking ahead, the city will host the 9th Annual Bright Future Employment Fair on Saturday, April 20th from 8.30 a.m to 1 o'clock p.m. at UMKC's Pearson Auditorium. Any Kansas City, Missouri resident age 16 and older who is interested in a paid summer internship may attend. Professional attire is required. To learn more information, please visit kcmo.org slash bright future. Area architects, builders, and engineers are invited to attend the Enlightened Accessible Design Forum on Wednesday, February 27th from 11.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. at the Kauffman Foundation. The forum is hosted by the Mayor's Committee for People with Disabilities and the KC Chapter of the American Institute of Architects. The goal of this event is to brainstorm ideas to make Kansas City more publicly accessible, especially to those with disabilities. For more information, please visit AIAKC.org. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to KCMO.org, scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the Weekly Report for links. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Fred Schneider. Have a great week.